This just looks like a world full of goodness. My nutrition spot for today refers back to yesterday. I mentioned that if you put a little dollop of fat on your vegetables or when you cook with them that it makes your body be able to take out the nutrients better. And then I thought, wow, I don't know that I've ever really heard that before. Let me go back and see if it's founded in research. So I did. And I found that a study was done at Iowa State in 2004. And that's where they came up with the information. What they did was they had people eat a normal salad. And they had them use just like a low fat dressing on there. And then they took a blood test and they couldn't find any of the nutrients that were in the salad in their bloodstream. Well, then they had them use a higher fat, a high, uh, fat, full fat dressing on there. And then they took a blood test and that all these nutrients that were in those vegetables came out because the and were in the bloodstream like they needed to be because the fat primed the body to take the nutrients out of the vitamins and use them so we do need to use some good butter good or or ghee it's spelled g h e e coconut oil when we're cooking our vegetables and then use a really good salad dressing that you probably want to homemade make one and then use a full fat so that it helps when you're having a salad you want to be able to put the good fat on there to be able to help the nutrients draw out and your body to be able to use them that's my spot for the day for today's exercise Diddy I want to talk to you a little bit about cardiorespiratory training. There's four phases that are typically used and but I want to talk about the first phase today. This is the one we're we're typically familiar with and you know we cardiorespiratory training is to get our blood flowing, get our oxygen levels up and it really props us for a lot of, of everything else that we're doing to, to make us to where we're better able to to exercise a little bit harder, a little bit more intensely and to get some some better advantage out of it. There are multiple parts to it. The first one is is um, frequency, how how often we're exercising. The second one is duration. So what's the time period? So like over a course of a week, are you trying to do 60 minutes, or you're trying to do 180 minutes, whatever it might be. And the third one is the duration of the sessions. So if you want to do 180 minutes in a week, then how many sessions you're going to do? If you're going to do four, uh, say six sessions, you're going to divide that by 180 by 6 and that's going to be 30 minute sessions six times a week whatever so you know, set your goal and what you want it to be you know if it's 60 minutes it's 60 minutes divide that by four that's four times a week 15 minutes at a time that you're going to be doing the aerobic uh, base training the next one is intensity and, and we've talked a little bit about your your talk test you're going to want it to be like a three or four rpe so you're still able to talk you're just doing things for that time period and the next one is is zone, and and really that has to do with your heart rate. Uh, the training format in phase one, all it really is is steady state. We're going to be doing the same thing for 15 minutes. And within phase one, the the last item here is work to recovery ratio. Really, you're probably not working hard enough that you need to recover. So keep in mind there are four phases to cardiorespiratory training. Today we're talking about phase one, the one most of us are going to be in and doing, and. This is, this is an exercise day that can help you understand that it, cardiorespiratory training is an important part. It's your base training. It's what gets you up and going. Two as they're growing and then we butchered them and then when we were all done we had them where we have put them into a shrink wrap and we've got our label on them so today we're going to take our chicken 
and I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful, wonderful baked chicken. So what we're going to do is cut it open and just clean it out first. Just rinse it out. It's all clean already. But you always take and re-clean. Rinse it out really well. Okay. It's all rinsed off. And now what we're going to do is combine and take it and um, put spices all over it so that it can sit all night and, and get good. All right, so I'm going to combine fennel seeds red pepper flakes, major majorum, thyme, and I will have this on the website so that you'll be able to see. This is actually real thyme which we're going to put in and under it and then I've got salt. And last but not least, pepper. All right, I'm going to combine this all together. All right. Now, when we do our chickens, we make a little opening so the legs can go in, and this way they can it can open up. I'm going to rub it all over with olive oil. And now I'm going to take my rub and rub it. I'm also going to make sure that we've got it inside. Rub it up good. Then what I do <clears throat> is I take and split this so that it opens up the skin just a little bit. You see my finger is inside the skin. And I stuff garlics in there. I stick <coughs> onions up inside of there. So we make it a little bumpy, but that's okay because we're just going for great flavor. Then I'm taking the rest of the onions and putting them inside. And we're taking lemon and putting the lemon inside. Now this is going to, I'm going to connect these back up again, and I'm going to cover it with um, plastic wrap, and this is going to marinate overnight for us, and then tomorrow night, we're, tomorrow we're going to put it into a, an oven that's 300 degrees with um, red potatoes and carrots around it. So it's the next day. This is marinated all night. It didn't have to, but for us, we chose to have it do that. I've taken red potatoes and carrots, and I'm going to toss them with olive oil and rosemary leaves. I'm going to work it all together so that they're all covered. A little more rosemary and some salt, which is a really good thing because potatoes need salt. Okay, so I'm going to take this chicken and you remember I had the thyme that's on the bottom here. And I'm going to leave it on the bottom. Leave that there and then put all of these around it. 
This just looks like a world full of goodness. A little more drizzle, a little drizzle on there and on the table. A little more rosemary and a little more salt. And now, bring it up. Now we're going to cook this at 300 degrees for two to three hours. Usually I cook this in a slow cooker but I'm very excited to try it this way in the oven because it's supposed to come out nice and crispy. So we're gonna try it and then we baste it also every little while. And so if I'm getting ready to baste it, I'll show that to you. Chicken is out of the oven. I'm gonna show you what we got here, what it looks like up close and personal. Nice looking, it, it looks crispy on the outside. All those veggies are looking very enticing. Uh, looks like we uh, got it good. We've actually tasted a little bit. And the taste that we had, lots of good juicy flavors. Sunny. <laughs> so just a little bit of follow up on the chicken. It was amazing. It was really, really good. But... I'm not going to do it that way again. I loved all the seasoning. I loved marinating it overnight. I loved everything that we did to it, except for putting it in the oven. I prefer the crock pot. So if you have a big crock pot and you set it in there and then put all your vegetables around it and then cook it, slow cook it, I think it would be even better. It was delicious, but I just think that that would do it even better.